Aram is going to take the floor and, uh, and talk to us about opportunities of culture diversity and how to attract young, diverse female talent. Take it away. Everyone, moon welcome. Uh, we always start our every gathering with a huge welcome to all of you who made it here today. Um, and yes, I want to tell a little bit about, you've, you've heard a bit about my background, but I have worked in fashion and creative and media industry for the past 13 years. And what became one of my education in that time was while these industries that I'm part of, we are part of creating culture, but we are not representing culture diversity. When we look at media, we can see over 70% of media and publications are mainly white or male. And when we look at the gender diversity between what is published, we see that the voice of women, every woman, for one voice of woman, there's six voice of men. So no wonder we get overheard. But this power and structure also means that voices of women and minorities and people of color doesn't become part of the narrative we keep telling them in, in media, in uh, social media uh, to our young girls. But also it affects their opportunities because Visibility creates opportunities. This is our motto. And be because they're not visible, it's hard for them to climb up the ladder and their voices, their stories becomes unheard. So let's look at what things look like in the, in the positions of power here in the Nordics. We have 2% of the executive teams here in the Nordics being part of uh, what we call BIPOC community from Asia, Africa, and they are um, yeah, I just need to see what I cannot see. Okay, and then 90% of the CEOs of the largest listed companies in the Nordics are male. So we have 10% women on top, and only 2% from culture backgrounds, culture diversity backgrounds. So what's the effect of it? Then we see campaigns that comes out have missed the mark, telling our girls being white is beautiful. Or we get some headlines saying there is so much dynamic among the top leaders, which I cannot see. Or fashion claims to have diverse runway, and, uh, but when you look at the front row, they're all white. <clears throat> there you go. So what are we telling to the, to the next generation? that you are not part of the future. Isn't that true? You can see what you can be. Growing up, uh, I always wanted to be part of the creative industry. I writing poem, I writing and drawing and everything, but I never knew how I could be part of this industry. And it's no wonder because I lack role models. I didn't know how to do it in Iran and I don't know how to do it in Denmark. This is me growing up. Uh, I have what I call 36 years of experience in learning to belong. Lived across four countries and 20 cities, which means moving around different neighborhoods and different communities. And been in the creative industry for 13 years. But most of the time, wondering and figuring out why women and diverse talent run into closed doors almost 90% of the time. These are the barriers I figured for myself. So the, the reasons why we, wall, we walk into these walls are we lack the network, we need access to knowledge from the inside, we need capital and financial support, but we also need visibility and, in, uh, and, and another barrier is inequality that is systematic, which we looked at before. So, that's why I started the Soulfuls, because I wanted to create a safe space for young women to feel seen, to feel they belong, and they feel included. And, and then helping them to be introduced to role models who are making a change happen in their industries, because they are so important. Not only they are changing the industries, but they are also telling our girls our young generation, what is their options? What are their options? 
So if you think about media, most of us will think about, okay, so if I want to work in media, so I need to be a journalist. Or if I want to be working in fashion, I need to be a designer. Or you know, if I wanted to be an uh, entrepreneur, I need to be looking like Mark or Steve or something like that. But that's not true. That's, you know, that's, we, need to, we need to tell them the whole story. They need to know their options, because then they have the power to choose. We launched our mentorship program back in uh, October, and it was one of the comments that really stayed with me and really um, also reminded me why we, we do Soulfuls. One of the mentees came to me and said, here is the room of 20 powerful mentors that I follow on LinkedIn and Instagram, but they are here for me, right? I was like, of course, like that's why we are doing this. And she was like, I cannot believe what, who I am, what I have to say, what my challenges are, it's important for these people. And I, I, and I said to her, you have the same value of everybody else in this room, and of course they are here to listen to you. Not only this, we are also going to do reverse mentoring when you will tell them what's up and what's down. So it's important in the feeling of seen and feeling belong and included. You put value in your diverse talents, in your team, but also people around you. And then you include them and you give them the power to decide and make decisions without you undermining them. And yes, so as um, Nibal was saying, invite them to dance, but, but really like, let them also be the ones who invite you to come to dance because you have the equal value and equal responsibility. So, what is the narrative you are changing? We are working with co the community that we are working with, the Soulfuls, we are focusing mainly on storytelling and role models because we know they have the power to change what we, we think is our um, perceptions. And we do networkings and events to give them knowledge, tools, and what they need. And as well, developing uh, and personal development tools, which is through mentorship, allyship, and different uh, programs. And at the same time, we also feel like we need to work, and we are helping companies to both attract but retain talents. So we work with them in, in, through their inclusive content and campaigns, but also now working uh, through some bespoke programs like mentorship and events and allyship and then DEI strategy because we also want when we give our young talents to the companies they know how to treat, uh, treat, uh, no, how to treat them well there you go another example is when we have all the mentors gather women from all different corners of the industries and from different backgrounds different age different ethnicities and culture, listening to each other, sharing stories about who they are and what they're doing. But also we encourage them to go deeper. So we really encourage the, the feeling of vulnerability and like what was difficult for them to come through. And they all shared. And what was amazing at the end of the circle, they all felt a, a, a huge uh, feeling of connections. They connected on being a woman, first of all, being mothers or entrepreneurs or being just the, the only one in the room for the most of the time or the first one ever in a company or, or basically just really kind of overcoming everything that we as women need to overcome. Because we need to make room for those stories to be part of our everyday life. What we see on, again, on TV or what we see on social media is affecting our young girls and telling them who they are. We didn't have that before, but we do have it now. So what, you, what we put out as campaigns or content out there, it matters. It's shaping personalities and it's shaping the future of a whole generation. So we need to make room for people to be able to, ref so, so they can reflect themselves into. So DEI needs your commitment, it needs your action plan, and it needs your investment, both in time, but of course also resources. So why should you DEI? Because it's the right thing to do. If that's not convincing you, 
or it's not, you know, but let's postpone it. Let's look at other opportunities. We love the word opportunity in Soulfuls. It's innovation and creativity. Companies with inclusive cultures shown to have around 60% more in innovation and creativity and open-mindedness. And if that's not the trigger for you, what about money? So improved financial benefits, gender diverse management is to uh, earn 28% uh, 28 more and be more profitable. And if you add culture diversity into it, the number is on 36%. And nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity, said the white man, so must be true. That's it. Thank you. Thanks so much.